You can see behind me are some type of ruins, and you would be right. What you're looking at is the oldest known, purpose-built Christian church in the world. It's located in Aqaba, Jordan, and it was built between 293 and 303. Actually, the building predates the, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulcher in Jerusalem and also the Church of the Nativity, which is in Bethlehem. Now, the church, as I said, is the first purpose-built. In other words, it's the first church that was built by Christians for the purpose of worshiping. Uh, up until that time, they worshiped in homes, They'd, uh, and uh, the Jewish people would typically worship in the, in the synagogues. But uh, this particular church was built before, even before Christianity found favor with the Roman imperial government. It even predates the, the greatest of all of the Roman anti-Christian persecutions. That was with uh, Diocletian in 303 to 313. The church ruins, of which were uh, excavated in 1998, had a narthex and a chancel. And evacuation has unearthed walls that were up to 14 feet 9 inches high pretty precise. <laughs> During the first phase, the church uh, would have held about 60 people, 60 worshipers, but then it was later extended to hold about 100. The building appears to have been uh, abandoned during the persecution, which was 303 to 311, and then it was refurbished between 313 and 330. Well, it was destroyed by an earthquake in 363. Hmm. Now, I wonder why. I have some thoughts about that. You know, we as human beings are not very good listeners. Uh, we hear, we hear a lot of things. But we don't always listen. And Jesus, uh, Jesus understood this. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 15, he, he said, He who has ears, let him hear. In other words, pay attention, listen. He said that again in Mark chapter 4, verse 23. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And then in the uh, parable that he gave about the, the seed that fell upon different types of ground, he, uh, at, the, at the close of that, it says he, he called out. In other words, he shouted it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. <laughs> Several times Jesus used that phrase. And in, the, in the book of Revelation, in the message to the, uh, the seven churches in chapter 2, it repeats it several times. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So, listening to, to what God has to say to us is very important. We hear a lot of things, but we really need to listen. In uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 17, we have the, uh, the incident of Jesus going up on the top of the, of the mountain with Peter, James, and John. Remember that? It's called, we call it the transfiguration because when he was up there, he was transformed, and then they could see him in his, in his glorious uh, body. And, and there was Moses and Elijah there with him. And they were visiting there, and Peter and James and John were, oh my, what, wow. And Peter says, says Lord, Lord, let's, let's build three temples, one for you and one for Elijah and one for Moses. And then this cloud came down and covered them. And uh, the voice said, this is my son. Listen to him. And then it went away. Okay, so when Jesus got to the end of his ministry and he was spending time with his disciples, let me share with you what he said. I'm going to read this from uh, Luke's Gospel, and it's uh, chapter 24, beginning at verse 44. 
Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But you stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Those were his, uh, those were his words, his final words before he left, what he told them they were supposed to do. Um, and I got to thinking about uh, maybe another little scenario that uh, maybe maybe he uh, called Peter and James and John over to him and said, "Guys, do you re do you remember when um, when we went up on the the mountain and uh, I was you know glorified in front of you? And, oh yeah, Lord, we remember that. How could we how could we ever forget that? Oh Peter, you remember what you said?" Uh, uh, yeah, I, I said we should build three temples for each one of you. And uh, Jesus said, yeah, that's right. You know, now's the time. As soon as I leave, the mission of the church is going to go out and build temples, build magnificent cathedrals, uh, get the greatest artists in the world to, to paint murals and, and make statues of... of uh, of uh, all of the the prophets and and of me and of Mary and and, and just uh, you know just 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 blow the world away with all these magnificent buildings so people will come from miles around to see all of this. Now's your time. Now you wanted to do that. Now's your time to do that. <laughs> no, Jesus did not say that, did he? Hmm. He said to his disciples. This is what I want you to do. I want you to go out and proclaim the gospel. In other words, I want you to proclaim that I lived, I died, and I rose again, and that those who come to me in repentance will have forgiveness of sins. That's what I want you to do. So it makes me kind of wonder when I see all the history of the Christian church, and so much of it is focused on buildings, magnificent structures. And I think about, I think about all of the money that was spent, all of the, the blood and sweat of the common people that was used to build those buildings. And it's hard for me to see Jesus in that. Now, I, am, I know I'm uh, maybe going out on a limb here a little bit, and I'm, not, and I'm trying to say that we shouldn't have church buildings to worship in. But it seems to me, it seems to me that it has become so easy for us to forget the message that Jesus gave, the, the humbleness, the, the, the pure love and compassion that he had for us and focus on the glamour and the glory of man's created things. Come to think about it, that's what happened when Moses led the uh, Israelites out of Egypt. The first thing they did when he was up on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments was build a golden calf so that they could worship it. So my message for us today is... Uh, Let's keep our focus on Jesus and let him be the one who changes our lives.